My name is Jeff Perry and I'm the manager of the Webbench team and today I'm going to talk about Webbench thermal simulation. The question would arise as to why we even want to do thermal simulation of a power supply board. Well first of all we want to identify problems on the board uh, having to do with temperature which is obviously a problem with power supplies and one of the things that thermal simulation will bring you that is not accounted for in Theta JA is coheating of parts that are close together on the board. And with a power supply board, oftentimes you want to have a FET very close to a diode or an IC that has uh, an integrated FET. And so the simulator will tell you about coheating of parts that are next to each other. The next thing that a simulator will bring is the ability to try different solutions to thermal problems. So you can do things like change copper thickness, change your airflow, change ambient temperature, and uh, modulate the voltage and current uh, being supplied to the board to change the power dissipation. And then lastly, a simulator will allow you to visualize the results across the board. Uh, and so in the Webbench uh, WebTherm thermal simulator, we give you a color temperature plot across the board with adjustable scaling so you can see where the hot spots are and really zero in on the problems. This is a screenshot of the WebTherm thermal simulator in Webbench. In the upper right there, you see a little thermometer button, and that's uh, how you would access the thermal simulator by clicking on that. On the right side of the page, uh, you can see the PC board that we use, and the components are located on that board, uh, placed automatically by uh, Webbench. And so these are the components that dissipate most of the power in the design. On the left side is the panel where you'd enter in your uh, simulation parameters. And so working our way down from the top there, you've got your input voltage, your output current, and that will determine power dissipation on the board. You've got a top and bottom ambient temperature. Uh, you have the copper weight or copper thickness, uh, the board orientation, uh, and then below that you have the airflow section where you can uh, specify the direction of the airflow and the airflow velocity. And then below that you have the edge temperature treatment. Now what this is, is you can treat an edge either as an insulated edge or you can specify a fixed temperature for an edge. For example, if you know you have a, uh, a hot part out there at 70 degrees C or something, that edge can be fixed to 70 degrees C. Thermal simulations take uh, several minutes to run, two to three minutes, and when they're done, you'll get a presentation like this. And what this shows you here is a color plot of the temperature across the board. Um, Here's where you can view the interactions between components, and you can see on this board there is a diode next to an IC, and the diode is the hottest thing on the board. The temperature scale over here uh, on the left side ranges from 65 degrees C, which is the blue, up to 85 degrees C, which is red, and there's also a table in the upper right where the uh, temperatures of each component are listed. So you can see there that the uh, diode, which is the D1 component, is 84 degrees C, and the uh, IC, which has the integrated FET, is 78 degrees C. So in this case, both the diode and the FET generate uh, heat, and depending on the duty cycle of the design or your input voltage, one or the other of those may generate more of the heat. Uh, lastly, if you look at the board itself, you can see we uh, show both the top side and the bottom side of this two-layer board, uh, including thermal vias. Here's an example of a design that has 14 to 22 volts input, 3.3 volts output at 6 amps. Uh, this is a uh, LM3150 uh, FET with uh, our FET controller that has two external FETs. And you can see here on the left side, a simulation was run using half ounce copper, which is very thin copper. And in this case, the low side FET was 117 degrees C. Now we ran the same simulation using thick copper at 4 ounces and that low side FET temperature dropped all the way down to 68 degrees C. And so, you know, this is one of the things that allows you to visualize uh, how to correct design problems. So to summarize, Webbench Thermal Simulation allows you to identify and solve thermal issues, including the coheating of adjacent parts. It gives you different ways to solve thermal problems, either with heat sinks, fans, copper area, or thickness. Uh, it gives you a color temperature plot across the PC board, and uh, let you visualize the results, and in general, saves you a lot of time in your design. Thanks for joining us today. I encourage you to try Webbench tools yourself at webbench.ti.com.